The next thing we're going to be looking at is we'll take numbers or we'll take expressions that are in trigonometric or polar form and we'll multiply and divide them and look at an application problem as well. Now for instance this first bit that we're going to be looking at is a product theorem. Now with the product theorem you could convert everything to rectangular form and then just multiply as we usually did like with the FOIL method first outside insides last or a box method but these are some shortcuts. So for the theorem, product theorem, I have two numbers that are in polar or trigonometric form. So R1 and theta1 mean the first expression and we're going to multiply this times R2 theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. So the shortcut for this is that we can just take R1 times R2 times cosine of the sum of the thetas plus I sine times the sum of the thetas, theta 1 plus theta 2. That's the product theorem. Let's look at the quotient theorem and again you'll want to make sure that you have these on a note card. The quotient theorem I'd use the same expressions R1 cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1 divided by R2 cosine theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. So if we rewrite this then I can shortcut this by saying it's R1 over R2 times cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2. So it's the numerator angle minus the denominator angle. Okay, and so these are my shortcuts. So we're going to work through quite a few problems with this. And remember I could convert these to rectangular form and then multiply them. This is just a little bit faster way to use these two theorems. And again, please put these on a note card because you're going to want to refer back to them often. So to get started, let's go ahead and choose some problems from my math lab so they will be familiar to you when you start working on your homework. The first one that we want to look at is in this shorthand notation form that we talked about before, the cis that stands for cosine plus I sine. So the first thing I would like to do with this is to rewrite it. So I would call this 2 cosine of 380 degrees plus I sine of 380 degrees. Again, that's that cis divided by 18 times the cosine of 80 degrees plus I sine of 80 degrees. So simplifying 2 divided by 18 is 1 ninth times the cosine of 380 minus 80 would be 300 degrees plus I sine of 300 degrees. So from here the cosine of 300 degrees that would be right here. Our reference angle would be 60 degrees. So this kind of follows after that reference angle. So the cosine here will be a positive value and the sine will be some negative value because I'm in quadrant 4. So the cosine of 300 degrees is going to be a 1 half. Again the reference angle is 60 degrees so the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half is where that comes from. And then the sine of 300 degrees or the reference angle if we use 60 degrees, the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 and it's negative because I'm in quadrant 4. <coughs> Excuse me, so this is 1 18th, so I'm going to take this 1 9th and distribute it. 1 18th minus the square root of 3 over 18i. So when we simplify this and I have this in the correct form then, what ends up happening is this goes to rectangular form. Okay, and that's what we're asked to do here is to write this in rectangular form. So this would be my rectangular form solution. So once you have the formulas, whether it's the product theorem or the quotient theorem, you need to make sure that you write it correctly. You need to know what quadrant you're in and you need to know your unit circle as usual. Now you could plug this into your calculator as well to check your answer. Uh, but remember, you can't just plug it in to get an answer. You actually have to show your work. So just an answer will not mean that you have any credit, it's your work that gains your credit there. 
So let's see if we can fit this over here and kind of work through here. So if I plugged in my original 2 sys 380, I don't have a sys key that I know of on my calculator here. So I'm going to start with a fraction, 2, and so I'm going to have the cosine of 380. I am in degree mode up here. Close parentheses plus i, which is second decimal, sine of 380. Close parenthesis, close parenthesis. And in the denominator, I'll have the 18, open parenthesis. I'll have the cosine of 80, and I am in degree mode, plus i sine of 80. Close the parenthesis on the sine, close the parenthesis on the denominator, and this is what I get. I get 1 18th minus this stuff. Now I don't think it'll convert this to a nice fraction for us because there's a radical involved, but let's see. No, it won't. But you can see the 1 18th matches here. And then I could look at my decimal approximation for root 3 over 18. So square root of 3 divided by 18. And if you notice now this matches the 0 0.09625, so this shows me that my answer is correct. <coughs> so again, you can use your calculator to check your work, but if you want credit, you have to make sure you do your work by hand, and then you can show the, the check part if you want. I think it's really useful to do that, to check your work, because that way if you have a mistake, you know that you can go back and find that. So this is our check answer part. So these would be decimal approximations. This would be exact. Okay, so again, you must show your work. Use your calculator to check, but not to do the work. Let's go ahead and look at another one that's this shortcut notation. I just want you to get used to working with that if you already not. So for the next one, we're going to be looking at a product. And we can check this one on your calculator as well, the same way, except we use multiplication instead of division. So first of all, let's go ahead and just rewrite this from this shorthand notation to its long form. So this would be the square root of 7, cosine of 90 degrees, plus i sine of 90 degrees, times square root of 7, times the cosine of 180 degrees, plus i sine of 180 degrees. Okay, so using our formula, I'd have root 7 times the square root of 7, times the cosine, and these, this is the sum, so this would be 270 plus i sine of 270. Root 7 times root 7 is root 49, or 7. The cosine of 270 is 0, plus i, and then the sine of 270 is a negative 1, so this is a negative 7i, is what we get here. So the real component is, the real number component is 0, and the complex component is minus 7i. And again, you can check this on your calculator if you'd like. It's good to take the time to do that, and then if it doesn't match, you know that you need to go back through and check your work. Find your mistake. Okay, for our next example, we're going to be looking at a quotient. Now this one, when I subtract the angles, I'm going to be getting negative angles involved, so this one is a little bit different than anything we've looked at so far. So let's go ahead and write this out. So this would be 30 over 5 cosine of 110 minus 65. Oh, I guess we won't have negative angles here. That's kind of why I picked this one, but the, I guess the one that my math lab had for this example didn't work out that way. Plus I sine. Actually, I want to go back through. I want to find one with a negative angle because the negative angle part is kind of what I want to show. So we're going to do the same problem, just different numbers. Okay, so we're still going to find the quotient and write it in rectangular form, but what we're going to use is 6 cosine of 140 plus i sine of 140 over 3 cosine of 185 plus i sine of 185. Okay, so when I rewrite this now, I get 6 over 3 
cosine, and when I subtract my angles, now I'll get that negative angle that I wanted to have. Plus I sine 140 degrees minus 185 degrees. Okay, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 140 minus 80, 185 is negative 45 degrees plus I sine of negative 45 degrees. Negative 45 is in quadrant 4, so the cosine will be positive, and the sine will be negative. And then we'll take the 2 and distribute to both parts, and I'll be left with 2 square roots of 2 over 2 minus 2 square roots of 2 over 2 I. And of course the 2's cancel for each one, and I'm left with the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2i. Now remember that i is not under the radical, so you have to be really careful how you write that. You don't want it to be so close that you think, hmm, it could be under the radical. So make that always very clear while you're working these problems. Now sometimes your original problem that you're starting with is not in a nice complex polar form. And so sometimes we're going to have to do an operation on it first, and then I will be able to go ahead and convert it from there. So this one we're going to says, this says find the following quotient. So we're going to be given a quotient here if I can get it to show up. Okay. So find the following quotient. Write the answer in rectangular form. It says first convert the numerator and denominator to trigonometric form. So trigonometric or polar form is kind of what they're asking us to do here. Now they don't know if we didn't convert it, so I don't really feel like we have to convert it. We can work with it as is. So this should be a little bit familiar. This is i over 1 minus i. So we're going to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate, 1 plus i. And I'll have i times the quantity 1 plus i in the numerator, and the denominator 1 minus i times 1 plus i. So this is i plus i squared over, I can FOIL this out or use the box method, 1 minus i plus i minus i squared. So simplifying, I have i minus 1, because i squared equals negative 1. In the denominator, the minus i and the plus i cancel, and I have 1 minus a negative 1. So I'm left with i minus 1 all over 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is going to be a negative 1 half plus 1 half i. So negative 1 half plus 1 half i. Now we didn't convert anything here. Uh, it says first convert the numerator and the denominator to trigonometric form, but we didn't need to do that. We can just follow through and do it regularly. They don't know we didn't convert it. This is a little bit more straightforward. However, if you did want to go through and convert this, we would have to take i and write that in x plus yi form. We'll have to find r, we'll have to find theta and rewrite it in that form to get started with that. Now sometimes these won't always be in standard form, meaning they're not going to be in a form that has an angle that I recognize. It might be an angle that is not a standard angle or one that I have memorized from the unit circle. Okay, so for here it says use a calculator to perform the indicated operations. So this is a product, so this would be 14 times 4. Now this cis meant cosine of 28.5 degrees plus 33.5 degrees plus I sine of 28.5 degrees plus 33.5 degrees. So four, 14 times 4 is 56. Okay, it's cosine, so if I add these two together, 28.5 plus 33.5 it's going to be 62 degrees, not a standard angle, plus I sine of 62 degrees. Now, what we're going to do with this one, if we read the instructions, we're definitely in degree mode, so in your calculator make sure you're in degrees, and directions are to round to four places. 
and I can't round until I get to the final answer. Okay, so what I'll have here then is 56 cosine of 62 degrees plus 56i sine of 62 degrees. So instead of putting cosine in a 62, getting a decimal, and then multiplying by 56, I'm going to put the whole thing in. So I need to make sure I'm in degree mode. So if you're in degree mode, and I wasn't on my calculator, I'm using on my desk, so it would be 56 cosine of 62 degrees. And again, make sure you're in degree mode. And here I get 26.29040 plus, then I'll have 56 times the sine of 62 degrees, and again, make sure you're in degree mode, plus 49.4450652i. Now, if we round to four places, this would be 26.2904, because this zero does not round the four up to a five, plus 49.4451, this zero rounds up because of the six next to it, i. Okay, so that's an example where we'll have to use a calculator because they're not a standard angle that we know about. Okay, next one, let's go ahead and look at one that is quantity squared. We always have to make sure that when it's quantity squared that we're not distributing uh, the square, the second power, through a sum or a difference. Now this one has that cis notation as well. I'm going to rewrite this in the longhand notation. So this means to take 2 cosine of 4 pi over 11 plus i sine of 4 pi over 11. So I'm in radians here and square it, meaning multiply it by itself. So this would be 2 cosine of 4 pi over 11 plus i sine 4 pi over 11 times 2 cosine of 4 pi over 11 plus i sine 4 pi over 11. So 2 times 2. Now I'm going to add these, so 4 pi over 11 plus 4 pi over 11 is 8 pi over 11 radians, plus i sine 8 pi over 11. So this would be 4 cosine 8 pi over 11 plus 4 i sine 8 pi over 11. So on your calculator, make sure that you're in radian mode now, Last problem, we were in degree mode. We want to make sure we're in radian mode here. So I'll have 4 cosine 8 pi over 11. Okay, so this one is a negative 2.619, plus 4 times the sine of 8 pi over 11. And again, please remember to make sure you're in radian mode for this one. 3.022998297i. Now let's go ahead and round this one to four places as well. So if we round to four places, this would be a negative 2.6194 plus 3.02. So one, two, three, four places. This nine would round this nine up to a zero. So this would become 30i. Okay, so that's my rectangular form of that product. Now the last problem we're going to look at is an application problem, and really it's more algebra than anything. We're going to be using the information that we just learned, but it's really a lot of algebraic manipulation. Okay, so make sure you don't skip any steps. This would be a great problem on your handwritten homework and a great problem for the exam as well. Okay, several different ways to work this. I'm just going to work through it using how I think it is easiest. And if you have a different approach you want to use, that's fine, as long as you show your work. Remember, you can't just plug it into your calculator and get an answer and write it down. You have to have your work. 
no work would be zero credit. Okay, so we have Z1, I'm going to write these down, 50 plus 75i, and we have Z2, which would be 10 plus 30i. Now what we're asked to do <coughs> is we're asked to basically plug it into this equation and what we're looking at are impedance for an electrical circuit. So let's go ahead and start plugging some stuff in. So it's going to be 1 over 1 over Z1 and Z1 was 50 plus 75i plus Z2 which was 10 plus 30i. Now again, like I said, there's several ways to approach this. I'm going to go ahead and find a common denominator in the overall denominator. And that common denominator is going to be 50 plus 75i times 10 plus 30i. So for this first fraction, I'd have 50 plus 75i, which is already there, but then I'm missing this 10 plus 30i. So I will have to multiply the denominator by 10 plus 30i. I also have to multiply that numerator by 10 plus 30i. Okay, next. On this next one, I already have the 10 plus 30i. What I'm missing is the 50 plus 75i. So I had to multiply the bottom by 50 plus 75i. So let's go ahead and multiply the top by 50 plus 75i now as well. Now the overall numerator of all of this is 1. So I can write the denominator as a single fraction now. So I have z equals, we're going to get some crazy numbers. I have 1 on top. Now my denominator here would be 10 plus 30i plus 50 plus 75i all over 50 plus 75i times 10 plus 30i. And I'm leaving this extra line here just to show, just to separate clearly the numerators and denominators. So 10 plus 50 would be 60. 30i plus 75 would be 105i. Now here, right when, here when I multiply this out, I can FOIL this out or use the box method. I'm going to come up here and do that. So 50 times 10 is 500. The outsides would be 50 times 30 would be 1500i. The insides would be plus 750i. And then my last terms would be 75 times 30 i squared, so this would be 2250 i squared. So combining like terms, I'd have 500 plus, I have 1500 plus 750 i would be 2250. And then this 2250 i squared, i squared is negative 1. So I'm going to have a negative 2250 plus 500 would equal 1750, negative 1750 plus 2250i. So we have some big numbers here. So negative 1750 plus 2250i. Okay, now remember as you're working, you can use your I key on your calculator to check some of these intermediate calculations to make sure we don't have any mistakes. So remember when you divide by a fraction, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So this can be rewritten as 1 divided by this fraction, which is the same as 1 times the flip of the fraction. So this is just negative 1750 plus 2250i over 60 plus 105i. And again, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so that's why we ended up flipping it. Now in the numerator, I only had the number 1. So I didn't end up really multiplying it by anything. I just have one times anything is just that same thing back. So this seems like we should be making some progress, but if we look back up here at the original problem, it says 
um, calculate using the equation, we need to calculate z. So I don't think we're quite ready to have z. It's not in standard form yet. So to finish this off, I'm going to have to multiply by the conjugate. So 60 minus 105i. 60 minus 105i. We're multiplying by the conjugate. Okay? So again, got to keep track of quite a bit here. You can use the box method on this or you can use the FOIL method. In the numerator, I have a negative 1750 times 60 would be a negative 105,000. My outside terms would be a plus a positive 1750 times 105, which is 183,750 I. So those are your outsides. And then I also have my inside terms. So for my inside terms, I would have 2250 times 60, so 135,000 I. Now my last terms would be a positive 2250 times a negative 105, which would be a negative 236,250 I squared. Now remember, I squared is negative 1, so we'll be able to combine these here in a little bit. And in the denominator, I'll have 60 times 60, which is 3,600. My outside and my inside terms will cancel, but let's show that. It would be 60 times 105, so it would be 6300 plus 6300i minus 105 times 105 would be 11,025. And again, that i squared. So we need to simplify this now, and we're almost to the end. We almost have this in standard form. So in my numerator, what ends up happening is this piece right here ends up being negative 236250. I squared is a negative 1. So it ends up being a positive 236250. So negative 105,000 plus 236250. So this is 131,000. 250, 250, 131,250 plus, and now I can combine my eyes. My eyes were 183,750 plus 135,000. So this is 318,750i. Now here in my denominator, these cancel i squared is negative 1, so this is positive 11,025. So I'd have 3,600 plus 11,025. So this is 14,625. So hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. There's lots of room for error here for sure. And I can separate this into two fractions, 131,250 over 14,625 plus 318,750 over 14,625i. So let's go ahead and take that 131,250 divided by 14,625. So here I get 8.97 435 8974. And we'll round here in just a moment. My other fraction is 318,750 divided by 14,625. So this one is 21.794871179i. Let's go ahead and round to two places. Actually, let's round to four decimals. I kind of think that's what we've been doing before. 8.9744, 1, 2, 3, 4 places, but this is 5 or more, so that would round up to a 4, plus 21.7949, so 1, 2, 3, 4. This 8 would round up to a 9 because of the 7. So that is the impedance. I need to make sure I include an I there. So kind of a long problem, but definitely doable. 
As usual, if you get stuck, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Good luck.